back. It's off the press now on The Breakfast. Good morning, Mr. Tune Good morning, my sister. How was the night? Fine. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Let's begin with the Nation newspaper this morning. The headline reads, Governors give Secondo soft landing. Pacify Wiki. The writer of the Nation also reads, PDP convention to hold in October. National Working Committee members barred from seeking second term. On the front of the Nation, above the headline, it reads, Nigeria takes on Indonesia over assault on envoy. Lagos records 42 COVID-19 deaths in eight days. If I reincarnate, I will remain Fela's disciple. Zulum demolished 11 mosques, says Murik. Dixon protests EFCC grilling over 17.5 billion Naira cash. VAT yields 1 trillion Naira in six months. Akpabio gets NDDC forensic audit report. World Bank stops 21 point 20.6 billion or your flood project. Name compulsory for WAEC next year. Dangate on Bloomberg's rich list. Lastly, APC governors back Buni Ketika panel. And on the Daily Sun, EFCC grills ex Biosa Governor Dixon. APC crisis. Governors stand by Buni. Urge leadership and members to continue with local governments, state congresses, and national convention. Also, this uh, on the Daily Sun, Lagos denies takeover claims of Lecky Concession Company. We have spent 502.3 billion naira on COVID-19 intervention, says the federal government. Also, Nigeria to start manufacturing vaccines uh, within one year. That's from NAFDAQ. No plan to sell airports, says the minister. And restructure Nigeria before 2023, ex-VP Sambo charges Buhari, National Assembly and Governors. And also seconders to go in October, reprives um, for embattled PDP National Chairman as opposition gives him two more months. Party's NWC has sold out to APC. Uh, I think those are the ones that we can share on the Daily Sun this morning. On this day newspaper, battle fatigued Leaderless 1,000 Boko Haram members surrender to gallant troops. Yahaya urges others to follow suit, renounces hostilities. Concerns over pampering of repentant terrorists. Above that headline, APC PDP leadership crisis resolved. Ruling party's governor backs back Buni as seconders survive in no victor, no vanquished decision. CBN sets 10 billion Naira capital base for credit guarantee companies. NAVDAC, Nigeria, to begin local manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccines by 2022. Another part of newspapers. Federal government recalls envoy to Indonesia. Or rather, recalls envoy as Indonesian officials assault Nigerian diplomat. Nigeria threatens to review relations, demands sanctions for errant officials. An ex-diplomat slam Indonesia. CSOs ask federal government to severe ties with the uh, Southeast Asian country. Also, Islamic New Year imbibe peace and compassion, Buhari tells Nigerians. 24 killed in Tokoto as household seasons uh, food with fertilizer. Also, South and Middle Belt forums plan protest over self-determination at the United Nations Assembly. Dixon dismisses petition as EFCC grills ex-governor over alleged 17.5 billion naira diversion and others. A man, 28, arrested for kidnapping and raping a 15-year-old girl and collecting ransom. Uh, we can also see here ex-permanent secretary 86 writes Buhari and ex-presidents uh, demands restructuring before 2023. Still on the punch this morning, states warn against violation as 30-day cases hit 10,066 and uh, also 70 deaths. World Bank lists Nigeria and nine others as high debt risk nations. PDP leaders save seconders, raise a zoning panel, convention holds um, October. And uh, finally, Nigeria's major airports not, not designed for international operations, says the federal government. Let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper headline still about the um, internal party crisis that seems to have been resolved within the PDP and the APC. It reads PDP, Secondus Survives, gets reprieve with early convention. 
PDP elects next chairman in October. NEC to constitute convention zoning committees next week. Tambuao says APC lacks structures of a political party. APC governors backs Bani Committee on Congress National Convention. Cholera afflicts 31,425, kills 816 in 22 states and the FCT. Nigeria recalls envoy over abuse in Indonesia. Over 4 billion naira approved for fueling of police vehicles. A Mofe wins best feature narrative at Black Star Film Festival. And lastly, on the Guardian newspaper, federal government allays fear over assorted vehicles, over assorted vaccines, as 176,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccines arrive today. All right, to Nicola Wale, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, my brother. All right, let's bring you in first with the story in the Daily Sun. It says, separatist agitators to stage one million man march in UN in September. When um, it is within their right, I have also said that um, any responsible nation, any nation that uh, wants to be ruled or wants to be guided by the rule of law, will allow any nation that doesn't uh, want the anarchy and FF to become the order of today within its boundaries who always allow people to protest when they do have grievances over one thing or the other. We also allow people to freely go to court to ventilate their anger, to lobby and also do mediation and conciliation. And all forms of dispute resolution should be encouraged. War is a thing that does no society or anybody any good. That is why we should always encourage people to demonstrate peacefully in a non-violent manner. If the separatist agitators have decided to go to the United Nations to demonstrate uh, for what they believe in, for the fortune of the country, or even for opting out of the Federation totally, I am of the opinion that it is within their right to do so. You and I do know that the United Nations stack up, supports their self-determination. The African Charter still supports self-determination. Even our own constitution, even though it may not have exactly encouraged the um, separatist movement, it at least uh, provides for uh, freedom of association. So if anybody feels agreed, about what is happening within the present uh, geographical boundary of Nigeria, and they want to go it alone, they think they are going to be better off alone if they stay on their own. I think we should not be caught them over that. Okay, Mr. Kolawale. More importantly, you would have seen that we have not been encouraging citizens to freely demonstrate and bend their anger here. These time people have attempted to demonstrate and all that. We send the security forces over them. Mm killing, maiming, and injuring uh, these people. So okay. we are now externalizing all the, the government action that has been pushing people to not begin to qualify the shores of Nigeria, to begin to fight their anger, and that doesn't do Nigeria any good. All right, Mr. Kolawale. I'm quickly moving on to yep. the next story. Um, this seems to be a big one across the papers. On the Punch newspaper, the headline reads, Federal Government Recalls Envoy as Indonesian Officials Assault Nigerian Diplomats. Now, this story, uh, when it broke, we saw the video where, you know, Indonesian immigration officials basically assaulted a Nigerian diplomat and pinning his head to the back seat of a car and the diplomat basically shouting that he could not breathe. And we've seen reactions from CSOs and other organizations saying that the reason why this can happen, why a Nigerian diplomat can be so harassed out of the country is because of how worthless the federal government have made um, you know, Nigerians seem and that the federal government should go all the way, escalate this to the United Nations and make sure that they see their ties with Indonesia and that they pay for that. But woo, when we look at our country and how we handle things that regard Nigerians in diaspora, um, beyond the recalling of this ambassador, how else do you think the government would react? Yeah, honestly speaking, 
I read that story, and I felt peace with the ambassador. We choked and been uh, assaulted and brutalized uh, by the immigration officials in Indonesia. It's a very, very unfortunate uh, development. But let me say this, that this kind of um, thing sometimes happens. I do recollect um, a Libyan uh, diplomat uh, who at one time or the other, I think was it in Britain or, or US, who drove recklessly and then uh, killed um, the citizen of the host country, the political authorities over there didn't uh, take kindly to it. But at the end of the day, they find a very diplomatic way of wisdom was applied to really find solutions to that problem. The challenge the Nigerian nation is having in Indonesia is uh, inflicted by our own citizens. Mm. Here and I will know that into Indonesia has become one of the uh, very, very juicy um, um, outlets for Nigerian drug couriers of recent. So many of our citizens take drugs to Indonesia and they process their court, they are taken to court, and at the end of the day, they are executed and their bodies repatriated to Nigeria. Charity should begin at home. We should be going to focus a lot of attention on the drug activities of our youth, especially to Indonesia, which is giving us a bad name. So each time any immigration official He's a Nigerian, before merely looking at their passport or whatever, they are taken to the suspect. They begin to treat them like suspects. And that is why you find that sometimes even a diplomat will fall victim of the kind of assault that we have seen the Nigerian uh, a diplomat in Indonesia go through of a recent. I don't support uh, this proposal or the decision of the federal government to withdraw the diplomats, the Nigerian diplomat in Indonesia, or the Nigerian ambassador. Rather, I would rather uh, encourage the federal government to seek apology, get a little commitment that that kind of a thing will never happen again, and also insist that those immigration officials that have protected the diplomats are adequately punished for their transgression and aggression. But well, Mr. 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 Kalawale, do you think that would uh, send a strong warning to other countries, you know, regarding how they relate with Nigerian okay. diplomats? I said, do you think the action you're recommending, do you think that would send a strong warning to other countries regarding how they, you know, relate to Nigerian diplomats and, in fact, her citizens? Well, uh, I think it will do. Why do I say that? Before now, Indonesia and Nigeria have enjoyed very good uh, cordial relationship. And on the level of trading, on the level of ambassadorial exchanges, uh, a technological transfer. And uh, you also know that uh, Indonesia has a very large Muslim population, just like Nigeria do have. If I each time anything happens to a Muslim in Indonesia or it happens to a Muslim in Nigeria, the Muslim in the respective communities have always uh, intervened one way or the other. An eye for an eye doesn't solve problems. Because, like I said, the challenge we are having in Indonesia is because of the drug cool activities of the Nigerian citizens, which has kind of uh, given every Nigerian that any immigration official in Indonesia a very bad name. You carrying a green passport, uh, you need a little suspect. Okay, so, Mr. if it is your citizens that have brought this shame upon the whole nation, then it is our own that we should uh, try as much as possible to clear. Indeed. Before we begin to take a pound of flesh okay. from the people of Indonesia. All right, Mr. Kolawale, I want us to quickly also talk about this national issue. I mean, this has generated a debate in the past few weeks, and it seems like, you know, the steam, you know, has settled. And it's about the PDP. You know, it says Secondus survives, gets reprieved with any convention. There had been calls for Secondus to resign over poor leadership. And we had guests yesterday who said that this simply was a personal issue and nothing to do with the leadership of Secondus. But it seems now that, you know, that's over. Um, the PDP members had a meeting from uh, Monday night to Tuesday night, and it seemed that they had settled out saying that um, Secondus doesn't need to reside. Their national convention will be moved from December to October, and that, um, you know, the leadership will be now based on zoning. 
you know, as well as the fact that Secondus will not be able to recontest um, for national leader of the party. Um, re also with the APC, Buni seems to have, you know, gotten, um, you know, the support of lots of people who say that, you know, they support his chairmanship of the caretaker committee. Um, uh, what do you have to say about um, the two parties, as ha the Guardian puts it, that they both have settled their internal crisis? Well, let me quickly say that what is happening within the respective, uh, within the two political parties is very, very unfortunate. Uh, totally uncalled for. We have had uh, 20 or about uh, 22 years of unbroken democratic uh, practice. By now, we ought to have uh, parties that are better organized, that are better financed, that are better managed. But that does not seem to be the case. All the parties, most of the political parties, if not all of the political parties that we have in this country today, have refused to grow. At the age of 22 or they are about, they are still behaving like a juvenile, a delinquent juvenile for that matter. And that is very, very sad. Nigeria has too many problems in its hands. There is food insecurity. There is property and life insecurity. Unemployment is about 33%. Infrastructure is in a comatose uh, uh, situation. And then uh, electricity supply hasn't improved uh, uh, very much. If a nation has that kind of a challenge and all that, and the parties have the responsibility to drop a blueprint to be able to solve some of these problems, and they themselves are engaged in this kind of fratricidal uh, war among themselves, this nihilistic war among themselves, how are they going to be able to address or attend to and find solutions to Nigeria's problem? That is why the crisis in the two essentially major political parties uh, is not too good for Nigeria. It could, I mean, it's going to have very far reaching consequences on all of us as a nation. And for the APC, my advice to them would have been uh, to tally on the side of the caution. Professor uh, Kayamo has said, with regards to the split decision given by the Supreme Court, it would have been better to ask a Buni and the Secretary Committee to, 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 to step aside. And then you inaugurate some other committees to begin to handle the affairs of uh, uh, the APC. That would have been the better approach to me as, as, as a lawyer, because no two cases are the same. The possibility might be there that somebody might uh, uh, come up in future and challenge whatever decisions, whatever recommendations, whatever action the Bruni committee takes, which at the end of the day may lead to the notification of most of the elections okay. that the APC might win in 2023. Look at what happened in San Paulo State. Look at what happened in Bayesa State. Victory was handed over to parties that never contested the election or that never that the people didn't uh, vote for. Simply because the party refused to abide by their own rules. They refused to abide by common sense. So in my humble opinion, merely lining up then Buni doesn't solve the problem in the APC. It would have been better to sally on the side of caution okay. by asking that committee to step aside and putting these people in there that is not likely to jeopardize uh, the future of the party and the candidates they may be presenting in 2023. Because the Supreme Court decision, when you read it very, very critically, with regards to the accredited elections and all that, uh, it doesn't uh, favor the APC and then the Buni committee uh, at all. For the PDP, honestly speaking, I should start with what is happening to that uh, party. The APC has been in power now for almost about uh, eight years, and I'm not too sure that any Nigerian person or any Nigerian citizen or any Nigerian voter is satisfied with the performance of the APC. The party they are looking towards, the party they think that might be able to come and fill the vacuum, the party that might be able to replace the APC is the PDP. But if they are also at each other's throat, how would they be able to fight effectively? Good how would they be able there, to put Mr. their house in order and, and then begin to mobilize and then organize themselves to win elections in 2023? As it were, it would be that Nigerian electorate really don't have an alternative in 2023. And you can also say that for even all the other political parties. None of them is coercive as of today. Cracks in the world of all of them. Even the Shawore Party, the state agent, I mean, the, 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 the authorities, have sponsored the 
a crisis within that party, and the party has also broken into two. One part, one side supporting Shawure, the other party teaming up with um, behind uh, somebody else. Well, it could also be guessed, or it could be said, I hope I am wrong, that uh, the authorities may also be behind what is happening in the PDP in order to be able to get power okay. or to okay. capture power in terms of power in the very very to have the easy life. But it's a, it's a, yes, I needed to state that those close claims are unconfirmed at the moment, but it's a great, great um, place to um, wrap up off the press. We thoroughly enjoy your analysis as usual. Thank you very much, and we ask you to have a great day. Thanks for having me. Okay, we'll take a break here, and we'll return with Today in History. We're talking um, entertainment generally.